It's a very complicated problem because <clears throat> the banks have been disrupted. So th the major disruptive technology or innovation in banks has been credit scoring. So I remember in the 1970s when I first got my, my first MasterCard, I went to a bank and I had to be interviewed by a loan officer who just asked me all kinds of funny questions, but just in his intuition, he'd learned what to ask to get a good sense for whether the person on the other side of the desk was likely to repay a loan of a given amount. And I passed, so they gave me a credit card with a $375 credit limit on it. But then this, this company in um, Minnesota called Fair Isaac developed a mathematical formula that would allow you, with this algorithm, to have a computer evaluate your credit worthiness. And so they don't even need to know your name or how tall you are or whether you shine your shoes. They just need to know how long has this person lived where she's lived, worked where, worked where she's worked, what's her income, and does she pay her other bills? And you get data on those four things, this algorithm will predict with a very high degree of accuracy the probability that that person will repay a, credit balance, uh, a debit balance of any given amount. So credit scoring took root in the issuance of store credit cards, like the Sears card, and then as the algorithm became more accurate, you used it for MasterCard and Visa and American Express. And then you could use it for automobile loans and then home loans. And now most small business loans are made through this computer-based credit scoring algorithm, not through the wisdom and intuition of loan officers. What's happened is because these are non-banks like Capital One, GE Capital, MBNA, that have taken this business from the big commercial banks. And rather than fight it, the reaction of the commercial banks, just like the reaction of General Motors, was to flee up market to pursue high net worth private banking clients, large global corporations where there still is no computer-based algorithm that can make the decisions for them. And so the banks are, have been, having been disrupted at the high end of the market, they're consolidating. And so Manny Hanny merges with Chemical, merges with Chase, merges with J.P. Morgan, merges with Bank One, and, and Nations Bank, which rolled, it up, rolled up what became Bank of America, was a similar consolidation of, at the high end of the market in response to their having been disrupted by the, the non-bank companies. So if I were running one of these, these behemoths up at the high end, what I'd do is I'd go to the third world and I'd buy a phone company. And the reason is that in, in the third world, there is no banking infrastructure. And so increasingly, the payment systems are emerging on mobile phones. And uh, as those countries grow and become economically prosperous, the phone companies actually become the consumer banks there. And they're just growing like gangbusters. So that's a disruptive technology relative to the credit scoring and the checking systems and credit cards of the, the mainstream. And that's what I do. I'd go to the developing world and buy MTN or CellPay or one of those in Africa and South Asia and, and turn the phone companies into banks. Mm -hmm.